Hey, this is not sir, and we're taking a look at the Musashi. This is gonna be a premium tier nine Japanese battleship, and it's gonna make its way probably two or three patches. It is the sister ship to the Yamato, so if you're like, not sir, that looks very similar to another ship. That's because it should. And look at that health pool. 97,000 health at tier nine. That is an insanely high amount of health at tier nine. So why is this at tier nine? Why isn't it at tier 10? Well, I, I don't think Wargaming is quite ready for a tier 10 premium ship. They have chosen to release a tier nine variant of the Amato sort of unupgraded. So what are the drawbacks compared to this? Well, it certainly isn't the gun. 460 millimeters, 37,000 damage on a broadside Iowa. Oh, hell yes. The rate of fire is five seconds slower. So it's 35 versus 30. The turret traverse is predictably horrendous. It's the exact same, 72 seconds going 180 degrees. Expert marksman helps. You could also decide to pick up something like, oh, I don't know, the faster turret traverse module, but I use the accuracy module coupled with the rate of fire module because it is a tier nine. It can pick up the rate of fire module and that compensates for the 35 seconds. So it's about 30 seconds reload, which honestly, if I'm deciding between a tier nine and a tier 10 version of the Amato, if the rate of fire, four seconds on rate of fire and 50% of the AA is gone, but I get it at tier nine. I think it's worth it. <laughs> You're going up against tier sevens, and yes, tier sevens and tier eights will have to fight this ship. There is no protection. You do not have to fight only tier nines and tier tens. You're fighting tier sevens and tier eights. These guns are big, really big. So AA is terrible even more terrible compared to the Yamato, which is one of the worst AA protected ships at tier 10. And the rate of fire, the rate of fire is noticeably worse, but 460 millimeter guns, 460 millimeter guns, <laughs> and it's got the same, if not better torpedo protection. It, she's a beast. She is absolutely appropriate when you consider that the Missouri is the other tier nine battleship that sits in this slot as a premium. Now, in my opinion, the Missouri is not that much better than the tier nine American battleship, the Iowa. They're both really fast. Missouri has slightly better bow armor, but that really doesn't matter. The Missouri has radar, which is a big, big deal. This versus the Izmo. Yeah, that's where we're getting into the issue. I think this is clearly better than the Izumo. The gun caliber alone makes it clearly better, but the layout's more usable. The torpedo protection is better. The A protection is worse, but it's got better armor. I think it's superior to the Izumo. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but so far, so good. This is my first game, and we're doing 107 thousand damage playing it exactly like a Yamato you keep everything on one side of the ship you slowly push with the primary flank and you go after targets that open up too much it's it's not doing anything crazy this isn't introducing a brand new play style the Missouri definitely did introduce a brand new style of play with radar being on a battleship this is not doing that this is very much exactly what you expect however saying that, you know, I think this is outperforming the mainline tier 9. That is absolutely something that maybe Wargaming wants to look at. But the Japanese don't really have a lot of fantastic premium battleships. Maybe two? Whereas the Americans, which one isn't good? Every American premium feels like a comparable ship to the mainline, maybe even better in some situations. I can't say that with a straight face for the Japanese. Some of the Japanese ones are so weird. It's like a down-tiered Amagi, a down-tiered Nagato. 
No, no. I want the big one. I want my Yamato. And you get it with this Musashi. So we're doing all right. We're moving forward. King George is there. I do feel the torpedo threat. Although friendlies are taking out the hood, which is good. And I'm trying to stay as narrow as possible and keep my guns facing forward. And immediately when I want to fire at the Missouri, of course, I fire at the Nagato. I was hoping to finish off the Missouri. We will be able to use our back gun, which, you know, is sort of a blessing because the dispersion on this gun went right there, taking out the Missouri. Friendly battleships taken out by the torpedoes that the Z-23 sent. And I, I don't want to go too far forward too fast. Z-23 sent torpedoes. It's probably going to be another 30 seconds before he can send again. And I want to be out of the area when that is going to occur. I think it's pretty safe to say we want to be out of that area. But gosh, these guns. Yeah, sure, the dispersion missed the target. But when we hit the target, we're hitting with a ton. A ton of damage. And the AA is awful. But you got 20,000 more health than the comparable tier 9. I kind of think that that's not enough of a sacrifice considering just how effective these guns are. It is work in progress though, so we'll see. But we finally take out the enemy Nagato. I'm moving off from the enemy DD. I do want to get a little bit of a tell. My aircraft is not available, unfortunately, and I, I did choose to use the fighter. It can come with the scout aircraft, but look at the gun range. I can hit everyone on the map right now, and that's no problem. I think you outrange the second highest tier 9 by like 3 kilometers. You could theoretically, in a matchup similar to this, never take any fire from the enemy because you would always be outside of their range. And whew. That's pretty big. We take big torpedoes. The torpedo protection holds, though. I'm going to try and set myself up to either have a friendly scout, the enemy DD, or I'm going to have a friendly ship alongside so we can sort of overwhelm them. And the concealment is exactly the same as the Yamato at tier 10. 13.5 is what I'm sitting at. I've got it obviously invested in with the module skill and also the commander skill. So if you're really comfortable with the tier 10, you're going to love this tier 9. It is bread and butter. It, exactly what you want. And we're going to confirm the income because that's really what we don't know at this point. How is the income not so? Oh, you're going to like it. It's not like the Salem. The Salem doesn't have any extra income. It's sort of a weird premium. It's like an ar arpeggio blue steel premium. This is not that. So I can't see the enemy DDs. And I'm going to try and assist the friendly that is doing a pretty damn good job with their torpedoes against this enemy. Like, I'm really impressed. Both have torpedoes, but... He's basically hitting all his torpedoes or forcing the enemy to maneuver. Just barely missing. So my guns are ready to go. I'm going to sort of walk the shells around. There is threat of torpedoes, and here they come. I want to make sure that the torpedo hits on the torpedo belt. Just barely miss him. He just barely turns away. The torpedo protection mitigates it a lot. And I'm just going to continue going forward. He hits his torpedoes. Good job, man. That's a great job by the friendly. And there's two enemy DDs plus the Belfast. That is it. The Belfast is the only potential target that could detect me. The enemies have to get out of their smoke. And that's what one of them does. I'm just trying to have my gun set up and ready to go. Show yourself. I want to kill you. I just look around, confirm my friendly. I absolutely have a friendly pushing forward. Boy, would you ever think that you would see a Yamato pushing forward with a Pensacola? Yeah, no. Come on. Oh, oh! Oh, God, he's so low. He's so slow. Oh, he drops off at me. My turrets. 
<laughs> there is no turret traverse in these guns. None at all. It's a Duke of York, too. Do you ever think he would be with a Duke of York? No, nah, no. Nah. Boy, the, the, the guns. That is something that, if you're not familiar with the Amato, you will have to get familiar with. It's a big deal. You want to keep everyone on one side of your ship. I... I I 100% believe in that strategy with this ship. You, you can't try and rotate left to right. You're going to lose that battle really quickly. But we're just pressing forward. The enemy destroyer is going to show himself. And we're going to get a chance to fire on him. If the turrets will traverse. And it looks like he's committed going straight. Friendly Neptune takes him out. And all that's left is his Belfast. So... The Musashi. Impressive. I want to see if these stats hold true. It does feel very, very powerful when not dealing with aircraft. If there are aircraft carriers in the game, they will probably farm you for damage. You can't stop them. You have to rely on teammates to stop them for you. But being on North America being in the aircraft carrier state it is, I don't really have to worry about it too much. It's just not something that people play enough to build into your strategy. But these 460 millimeter guns, holy crap, I will enjoy using them a lot. And look at the income! Gamescom camo, the two signal flags, you can't beat this. The income is just off the charts. I love premium tier 9s for that very reason, and I enjoyed this. It is definitely different enough to justify the purchase, and that's the best thing you can say about a premium that sits in the same slot as the Missouri. I hope you enjoyed this first look. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.